Forex is a game about trading currencies. Each of the game's seven currencies exists in a currency pair with the other six currencies. So JPY CAD, that's a currency pair. Uh, one JPY is worth one and a half CAD. One and a half CAD is worth one JPY. Uh, because you need more CAD to buy one JPY, the CAD is the weaker part of the currency pair. Uh, conversely, you have uh, USD JPY, where the JPY is worth one and a half USD. The USD is the stronger part of that currency pair. And throughout the course of the game, you're going to be taking actions which are going to alter the values, uh, the exchange rates of these different currencies, strengthening or weakening the currency. When you strengthen the currency or weaken it, you're going to be making an adjustment to each currency pair in which that currency takes part. So what does that look like? Let's say the JPY is strengthened. If that's the case, then any currency pair where it's the stronger partner, then the weaker currency is to move one space to the right. And then any currency pair in which it is the weaker partner, it's going to move one space to the left. And that's got one. There we go. Uh, conversely, when a currency is weakened, you can see movement in the other direction. So these would move to the left and these to the right if the JPY was weakened. So on your turn, you're going to be taking one of four actions. The first action you can take is you can invest in the currency by buying a certificate, a, a stock in that currency, basically. You're investing in that world economy. So if I invest in the JPY, then I'm going to make that adjustment where the JPY gets stronger. So we're going to strengthen the JPY as such. Now, as part of that single action, you can buy two stocks, but they have to be for different currencies. So I can't buy two JPY in one go, but I can buy a JPY and a USD. And if I'm doing that, then both of them are going to be strengthened. So I strengthen the JPY, and then I'm going to strengthen the USD which is going to look like this and actually put the JPY back where it started. Uh, it's going to get stronger here. It's already at the, the max space, so it's actually going to flip over and now become the stronger part of that currency pair. So that is how you strengthen or weaken currencies and that is investing. Now the second action you can take is you can divest. You can sell stocks you have uh, and you can sell stocks, all, as many as you like, in a single currency type. So I can sell as many JPY if I like. The catch is that everyone else, as part of my turn, can also sell as much JPY as they want to sell. So if I sell one, Bob can sell two, and Carol can sell one, and that's four JPY, which means that the JPY is going to be weakened four times. And that's going to look like this. One, two, three, four. 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 And as you can see, that pretty drastically changed the exchange rate with the JPY. Now, the reason why you're manipulating these rates is you're trying to make futures contracts with the bank. And that is our third action, is, is the contract action. So if we come on over here, we have a uh, couple contracts already. One player is going to give two USD for three JPY because when he made this contract, one USD was worth one and a half JPY. After JPY has been weakened four times, however, now one USD could buy you three and a half JPY. If he made the contract now, he could, for two USD, buy seven JPY. Uh, but he has to resolve the contract at the original agreed upon rate. So regardless of the fact that JPY is now worth you know, seven of them is not is the exchange for two USD. He's going to pay two USD and get three JPY. So let's resolve that and see what that looks like. So the fourth action you can take is resolving a contract, and that involves resolving the first item in the contract queue, which you know runs along here. And any player can call for the resolution of any first contract in the queue. So I don't necessarily need to be the player who has the A contract to say, let's resolve that A contract. When that's resolved, we're gonna take it out of the contract queue, put it back in the contract display, 
and then this player is going to pay his two USD and get his three JPY and, and say bad words because he could have had four more bucks if he made the contract at a different time. Now this contract here that this player made, this contract B, he's promising four CHF for 14 CNY because that was and is the exchange rate. Uh, where one CHF will get you three and a half CNY. Now, he doesn't have four CHF. He only has two CHF. He can still make this contract. He can still promise money he doesn't have. Um, what happens when it comes up, when the contract is resolved, if he doesn't have that money, then um, it's going to be converted to a loan. So he's going to get the money, he's going to get the CNY money, but then he's going to have to pay four... CHF, the four he promised, plus one for interest, so five CHF. And so we're converting this to a loan, which means we're taking the contract card and we're moving it to the back of the contract queue. So when that gets resolved, he has to pay that five CHF or he goes bankrupt and he loses the game that ends the game. Now, let's say, because this would be a bad situation for him, because how is he gonna get that, that five CHF? Well, let's say that before that happened, so before this was converted, he made another contract, in which case he would use reuse the A contract card and would put it at the back of the contract queue. And he's going to do two pounds for three CHF, because the exchange rate is one pound for one and a half CHF. So now what happens, if we go back to the contract queue here, uh, the B contract is resolved and turned into a loan where he's going to pay the 5 CHF. But before the B contract is going to be resolved, the A is going to come first. And in that contract, he's going to give his 2 pounds to get his 3 CHF, bringing it up to the 5 he needs to pay off his loan. The other thing in the contract queue are these dividend uh, cards. And this is basically the timer of the game. When one of these is resolved, you remove the top uh, card, you pay uh, dividends for each stock you have, so two bucks of whatever the currency is for each stock you have in that currency, and then you move the stack to the back. And these eventually run out. When the last one is resolved, any contracts behind it in the contract queue are immediately resolved one after another, and that ends the game. Um, now, any contract, any uh, stock is going to pay two or three bucks unless it is on the eight space of the currency board. So if any marker, any one of them is on the eight space, then for example here the JPY is not going to pay out at all. And that can be pretty devastating if you're counting on that JPY to help you get the money you need to pay off a loan or be part of a trade. At the end of the game, after either someone's gone bankrupt or after uh, we've gone through all the contracts in the queue, then players are going to look at the currency board figure out which currency is the strongest, is the one that is the stronger partner, the most currency pairs. And all the money that you have, all seven different types of money are all converted to that one type of money, that one strongest currency. And the person with the most money wins the game. That, in a nutshell, is Forex and how you play it.